On Monday night, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu revealing what he says are new secrets from Iran's nuclear archive. In this side, Iran conducted experiments to develop nuclear weapons. And calling once again on the international community to follow the lead of President Donald Trump and sanction Iran. The only way to stop Iran's march to the bomb and its aggression in the region is pressure, pressure, and more pressure. The revelation, produced with visual aids, was something the embattled Israeli leader had promised for weeks. Though not nearly as dramatic as back in May 2018, Iran lied. When Netanyahu revealed Israel had stolen Iran's nuclear archive in a primetime presentation. The only catch? Analysts say none of this information is a game changer. The signatories to the nuclear deal knew about it for years. The IAEA said there was no new evidence of any work on nuclear weapons after 2009, and experts say none of what Netanyahu showed off Monday night shows Iran violating the deal. I think it's pretty underwhelming. What you would really need is a site that was active in the recent period in order to suggest that Iran wasn't complying with its commitments. And, you know, We've seen a few pictures, but we are really far from that at this moment. Still, Trump said last year's presentation by Netanyahu was part of the reason he decided to leave the Iran nuclear deal. This disastrous deal. And that was a win for Netanyahu. What we see is a consistent pattern of Iranian lies, deception, and violations. Critics say Israel's Mr. Security is looking for another win in a tough election a week away. His rivals slammed the statement as electioneering. On Twitter, Netanyahu's opponent in next week's election, Benny Gantz, said, Netanyahu's use of sensitive security information for propaganda indicates poor judgment, saying even in his last days as prime minister, Netanyahu cares only about Netanyahu. If Netanyahu's goal here was also to try to prevent a meeting between Trump and Iranian President Hassan Rouhani, that appears to have failed, Trump indicating he'd be willing to meet Rouhani. In fact, Trump didn't really give a response to Netanyahu's presentation of information from the nuclear archive. Who did respond? Iran's foreign minister, Javad Zarif, who fired away on Twitter saying the possessor of real nukes cries wolf on an alleged demolished site in Iran. Orrin Lieberman, CNN, Jerusalem. Well, Tova Lazarov joins us now. She is the deputy managing editor with the Jerusalem Post. Good to have you with us. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So uh, just days before Israel's September 17 election, Mr. Netanyahu says Iran destroyed this secret nuclear weapons site because Israel had discovered the location. But his political opponents call this nothing more than election propaganda, and Iran denies this happened. What's going on here? Well, you know, you can do a very clever election move, which is all at the same time a very clever diplomatic move. The two things happen at once. When you're the leader of a country and you're running for election, pretty much everything you do is both, you know, diplomatic and, you know, a part of your election campaign. So Netanyahu is running for the second time. He's running after having failed to form a government the first time. So he is already somewhat at the losing end. In the last election, he only, you know, broke even with his primary opponent, and, and, and polls have shown that he's slipping. So he needs a little bit to pull a rabbit out of a hat, so to speak. One of his largest, you know, one of his biggest reasons that he's telling the Israeli electorate his diplomatic track record. And the centerpiece of that diplomatic track record is his very close relationship with United States President Donald Trump. And precisely at the time when he needs to show how tight ties are with Washington, Trump is saying, yeah, I think we should be talking with Rouhani, something which, um, you know, a, a U.S. president has not done to Iranian leader since the times of Jimmy Carter. So this cannot play well for him. Right. Uh, uh, so, so do you believe? Uh, do you believe what he illustrated there? Because he had satellite pictures, although initially. Yes, I, I know. I, I think. I look. You. This is part of a trove of documents that that um, Israel that Israel was able to quietly um, spirit out of Iran was quietly was quietly able to get out of Iran already last year. So if you believe that 
the documents are accurate, then, you know, and well, exactly what has happened is that the IAEA has actually found evidence that the that what Israel is presenting could be accurate, then you would have, you know, no reason to doubt this document as well. Some critics um, have I, said that uh, the images uh, portray an inactive location. W what would you say to that? I think the question is not, is it inactive now? I think the question was, was it active? The idea is... No, but that that's, what, that's what I'm saying, that, that, that they saw it as inactive, the, the, what, the, the, the image that was supposed to show a functioning site. You, you mean that they're saying that it functioned? With it, the basically, look, quest, think, questioning I, questioning this I, intelligence. I, so you, you have no you have no a question that this this is real. You're just you're, you're really questioning the timing of this and the release and the way it's being done. I'm saying that, that I'm saying that the U.S. president is talking about meeting Rouhani, something that even if there was no election would um, be of concern to Israel. So Israel would have to find a clever way to respond. And this was a clever response to Trump on any day, in any moment, whether or not you're running for election or not running for election. After that, I'm saying that it was also a very clever um, campaign maneuver because it reminds everybody why they need to vote for Netanyahu. Because Iran has been one of his most successful diplomatic achievements. He is, he's been out on the forefront internationally among Israelis, among everyone on the dangers of Iran. After that, there is in, in a 2018 intelligence coup, Israel was able to obtain 100,000 documents from Iran about its nuclear program. This is one more document and only time will tell if it's accurate or not accurate, but people were fairly skeptical when Netanyahu spoke last year as well, and it's taken a year, and now the IAEA is saying, yes, what he said could be right. So I, I think, you know, it would be hard for a layperson to evaluate or not evaluate also the veracity of this claim. I think time will only tell, but, but, the, overall, but the overall cachet of documents is starting to prove itself. Right. All right. Tova Lazarov, thank you so much for joining us. We do appreciate it.